Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about some measures of variability or dispersion in data. So I'll take a conceptual approach in this brief video, and you can watch um, the subsequent video in the playlist uh, to look at the hand calculations for most of these measures of variability. Uh, so basically, uh, measures of central tendency tell you, give you an idea of what is typical or average or common in a data set, whereas measures of variability give you some idea of how much uh, dispersion or how much variability you have in a data set. So for example, let's say we have these two small data sets, both have a mean of 10. We can see that in the data set above, most of the scores are closely bunched around 10. So that would have less variability or dispersion than the second data set at the bottom, where the scores seem to vary a bit more widely around 10. So measures of variability or dispersion basically get at the amount of variability around a value, typically the, the amount of variability around the mean. So one measure of variability that isn't the best, although it gives you an idea of the difference between the largest and the smallest value in your data set, is the range. So the range is basically that. You locate the highest and the lowest values, and you look at the difference between the highest and the lowest values. So if the longest amount of time someone reported playing video games was seven, 720 minutes and the shortest was zero minutes, the range would simply be 720 minus zero. The range is not a, like a good measure of variability, but it does give you an idea of what the largest and smallest values in your data set are and how far apart they are. Uh, sometimes that can be useful information if you have like a very extreme outlier it'll help you to identify that uh, pretty early on in your uh, exploring of your data. Uh, somewhat more useful is the interquartile range. So the interquartile range is the difference between the 75th percentile rank and the data and the 25th percentile rank in the data. So the 75th percentile rank in the data is basically the score below which 75% of the scores in the data set fall when rank ordered and the 25th percentile rank in the data is the score below which 25% of the scores fall in the data. So kind of lopping off the upper and the lower uh, quartiles and seeing what's the difference between the the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile, and that is the interquartile range, sometimes symbolized by IQR, and readily produced by most uh, statistical uh, software uh, if you ask for basic descriptive statistics. So there's really no need to, to hand calculate this. Uh, a completely useless measure of variability is the deviation from the mean. Uh, so the deviation from the mean is basically if you take each score, subtract the mean, and then add up those deviation scores from the mean, it will always equal zero. So that's not typically useful. So that presents a problem because it doesn't measure anything because it always adds up to zero. So one solution to this problem is the sum of the squared deviations from the mean, which is literally taking the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. So you look at every score and its difference from the mean, you square that difference, and then you add up all of the squared differences. Uh, so watch the, the subsequent video and you'll, you'll see some hand calculations for this, uh, but uh, basically it's a raw measure of variability. It's in squared units and it's summed, so it's dependent on the number of cases. So it's not the most readily interpretable, but it tends to be an ingredient in a lot of statistics that we'll cover uh, in this course. Uh, so it's the, lo the long version is the sum of the squared deviations of the mean. Sometimes people will call this the sum of squares or the SS, and it's basically taking each score, subtracting the mean, and then squaring uh, the deviation and then summing all of those deviation scores. Uh, there is what's called the computational formula for the sum of the squared deviations from the mean. Uh, this is a little bit faster if you're doing it by hand. It looks a little bit more intimidating, but it is a bit faster if you're doing this by hand, where you would basically take each score, square it, add it up, so get sum of the squared x's, 
and then subtract sum of x squared divided by the total number of scores, and that would give you uh, the same answer as the previous formula, but likely be a bit faster and a little less prone to rounding error. So I will also upload examples of each of these in the playlist for the course. Uh, so if you're doing this by hand, uh, you're probably more likely to want to rely on the formula on the right than the one on the left, which can take quite a bit of time uh, to do. Of course, if you're using computer software to compute measures of variability, this is kind of done along the way and you don't have to worry about it so much. But it's useful to understand the mathematical uh, basics of or foundations of what's, what the computer is doing for you. All right, so variance in the population is symbolized by the lower case letter, Greek letter sigma squared, and it is calculated by simply taking the sum of the squared deviations from the mean and dividing it by n. So it's basically the average squared deviation from the mean. So it's a, a useful measure of variability, uh, except that it's in squared units still. So we may want to put it into uh, back down to the original units. So in order, in order to do that, we take the square root. So you take the square root of the um, variance. So here we have the square root of the population variance, and it becomes the population standard deviation. So this is back in the, in the original units. We can think of the, the population uh, standard deviation as a method of approximating how much variability is typical in a data set. So a higher standard deviation, all other things being equal, will mean more variability in a data set uh, for a typical score in a data set, whereas a lower standard deviation would mean less variability for a typical score in a data set. Uh, so just uh, taking a step back uh, to calculate variance in a sample, the formula is slightly different and the, the symbol is different. So lowercase letter s, squared stands for variance in a sample and it still has in the numerator the sum of squares but in the denominator there is a correction of n minus 1 that correction is applied because if we use the sample size um, in a sample in the denominator uh, it tends to underestimate the variance in the population so this correction is often applied um, most most statistical software programs will automatically apply it in the, in the calculation of the sample variance. So that's, uh, we can still think of it though as the average squared deviation uh, from the mean or our estimate of the average squared deviation from the mean in the population. Uh, we just have a bit of a correction in the formula. And the population standard deviation is symbolized by the lowercase letter sigma uh, the sample standard deviation, many sources will put the lowercase letter s, although many scientific journals will instead put uh, lowercase, or rather uppercase sd uh, italicized. So there's different ways to symbolize these, but uh, basically one is from the population, so it's based on the variance, uh, population variance formula, whereas one is in the sample, so it's based on the sample variance formula. 